Welcome to the best tips I can give you in Genshin Impact 2021 for new players and continued players to this day. For I am AR56. I made this video to try to help out those types of players that are starting or that are still, he still here. <clears throat> and this was uh, inspired by the mistakes I've made along the way and I wish I knew before I started uh, taking this game serious. So here's the first tip. Tip number one is when making food, you have to be very careful because some of the ingredients you use are also the same ingredients uh, used to ascend a character. Uh, for example, if we look here, Zhang Li, she uses um, these Chi Yun chili peppers. And when you uh, look over here, when you go to cook food, some of this food uses that same ingredient. Where could I find one? Right here. If you take a look right there, those are uh, chili peppers that uh, are used to ascend Shang Li. So when you are cooking uh, food, it is advised to be careful of uh, how much you are cooking so you don't waste all the materials you need to ascend the character. Tip number two is, is save your resources for characters you really want to build. This includes XP books, talent books, ascension materials, mora, all of those stuff, even your weapons, all of that is very important because that's how you build a character of course. Um, having enough mora, having enough uh, materials is so, so important, that what makes a character stronger. So always keep that in mind. Uh, the reason I do say this is because I believe reruns are coming back. Um, now it's, people are talking about Hu Tao and Ganyu coming back. So it's very important you start to save your uh, resources. Tip number three. I was told uh, this a long time ago. And I want to share it with you guys. And that is always focus on having one main carry in your team. And level them up first and their talents. My first ever main carry was actually Kaching. Kaching really helped me out so so much. Um, when I was a lower AR, around like 30, 40, and you know so so forth. Um, she really carried my team so much. I didn't really have many of the five star characters I have to this day. So I put so, some of my like ascension materials, everything like more XP books into her and I started building her. She's not at the her best right now, but you know, I put time into her. So always having that one main carry in your team when you're starting out, always try to focus on them and then other characters. Number four is your supports are your greatest teammates. And I say this because this comes from many games. Um, teamwork really is something you want to take in consideration. Yeah, you can like have one character and they suddenly obliterate everything, you know, if you build them right. But supports make them work 10 times better. And those supports I can recommend are um, Bennett. Bennett is a great support. He uh, he works really well with four piece uh, noblesse. That domain is found here. This domain gives you four piece noblesse. And Sucrose is also another amazing support. Sucrose is a 4 star. Bennett is a 4 star. So yes. I don't have a Sucrose built. But I do recommend if you do have her to build her. And build her typically with 4 piece Veridescent. Um, that is really good because she basically decreases the uh, elemental resistance of opponents. It says right there in the 4 piece. 
uh, another great support is also Singshu. Singshu really uh, has a lot of uh, potential, and even if you like drop like some constellations onto him, he be he becomes better. Uh, another one I can uh, recommend is uh, Kaya. Kaya is a base four star. Like you get him when you start out, right? So having Kaya built is uh, really good. Uh, I don't have him really built right now because I need the resources, but I do recommend him if you you obviously have him. So building him is also a great support. Number five is doing daily artifact r routes. Uh, this refers to uh, grabbing artifacts from interaction points around the map. They give you free artifacts that you can use to level up other artifacts. They're basically like this. I just did this yesterday and I got all these artifacts to drop into like any like any artifact I want to level up. Uh, I will put a link to a, to a guide in the description if you guys want to go check that out. So basically, yeah, these help you level up your artifacts. If you do not want to use like your other artifacts to drop on them. Tip number six is I recommend to start farming artifacts when you are a AR 45 or higher. That is because you start to unlock better artifacts. As in like instead of getting the purple ones you start getting gold ones I think one starts to drop yeah so I do recommend that I didn't do that when I was a lower AR because I didn't know so I want to share that knowledge with you so if you are AR 40 I don't recommend you start farming artifacts till, till at least you are AR 45 or higher but if you don't know what AR means, it means adventure rank, by the way. So yeah. Number seven is mastering the elements. Knowing to uh, master the element combinations makes you more powerful and helps you do more damage and helps you clear out areas faster. And the best one, the best way I can recommend for you to learn actually is that if you look at me on the map right here, I'm right here next to domain right here in Mondstadt and uh, this domain right here actually teaches you how uh, element combination works if you go in one of these trials I already did them but I mostly did them for the Mora but basically this domain right here teaches you how it works and how combining elements can actually make this game way easier for you if you're having a tough time Tip number eight is mining. Instead of hitting a, a rock with a one hand sword user, for example, doing this, takes way too long. See how I need to do five hits just to get that one piece of rock. But if you use a two hand claymore user, they, do it, they destroy this rock really quick and make it easier for you to pick up. So I do recommend that. See? Now if I would have hit the rock with Kaching, look how long it takes. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm fighting a boss. So yeah, you can also use the catalyst uh, user. Makes it kind of faster too. But I only see Yanfei work with that, but you can try other catalyst users as well. I do recommend. Tip number nine is save your primo gems it's important that you save your primo gems for characters you really want to to have whether it's because you love them or you want to play it's very important that you manage your primo gems because you only get like a limited amount if you are free to play and uh you can't really spend all of them on every banner especially how like pricey a 10 roll is like a thousand six hundred primo gems for just one 10 roll is a lot you know so when a character is featured you know you might want to like uh think of like if you really want the character or if you want to skip 
and wait for another five star to be featured you know whichever you want so again save your primo gems for characters you really want to have tip number 10 is uh well this is like for like low budget spenders tip number 10 i recommend is getting the welcome moon it's a great choice because for 30 days you get 90 daily primo gems um so i do recommend you getting it especially if you're playing the game like consistently you know day to day and also the battle pass is a great choice i recommend buying the battle pass because it gives you a weapon at a uh, battle pass level 30 so that weapon can be any of the any of these weapons right here i'd say all these weapons are good because their main stat is crit rate like that is amazing so if you want to spend a bit of money and want to make your characters better i do uh, recommend buying the battle pass obviously doing the challenges that they have here um, levels up the battle pass so keep that in mind tip number 11 is using combos to maximize your damage output so combos refer what i refer to by combos is you can do this with uh, characters where they have these attacks and that basically does a lot of damage you know just by normal attacks you can do that even with uh, other characters Yanfei has this one where you do three light and then one heavy so that's like a lot of damage she can put out the Eula does these three attacks and then into a elemental skill so you can do combos to maximize your damage. There's, I'll show you a, a, a Keqing one that I, I learned how to do is uh, she does four attacks goes invisible and if you hold the charge attack she can do that. So yeah. Tip number 12 is priority of your talent levels that's very important because certain characters succeed more with certain talents leveled up uh, this refers to like uh, your talent levels obviously and uh, having one higher than the other can potentially be better this example is Kaching. Kaching's um, it's better to have her ultimate and her normal attacks uh talent levels leveled up rather than her uh, elemental skill ability um because these these two right here the normal attack and the star ward sword help her do more damage so you know that's what i recommend and for like every other character you have to look at their talents and figure fi like find out what will be better for them to have a higher talent level of rather than another one so always think of that when you're gonna level up their talents number 13 um this one i really wanted to share with a lot of new players and this i really didn't know because i played the game right but i didn't know what certain stuff meant and that is a uh, Elemental skill refers to your ability and elemental burst refers to your ultimate which is those right there and energy recharge is how much particles you are getting back to charge your ultimate that refers to ER as well and elemental mastery EM is another thing so always keep that in mind number 14 is if you are out of mora there's many ways to buy mora the shops in monstat and leeway offer mora and you can buy from them and one of them one of the shops in monstat is from majori if you talk to her and you click on browse items you can actually buy Mora from her if you use the blue coins on the top right. I can't buy any because I don't have some. I always buy Mora because I'm typically broke. I'm like Mona and Zhongli. 
<laughs> so that's the shop in Mondstadt. The other one in Leeway is all the way over here. If we go this way. This shop, sorry, this shop, right here. So you come over here, walk over here, and you talk to Zing Shi, and she sells items as well, and you can actually buy more from her with the GL sigils, I believe that's what they're called, the, the yellow coins top right. And you can find these like uh, at rivers near the ocean, they're like this, they're like these crates. They can also like get and they have those coins and there's other ways you can also get um, those. You can actually buy more. That there is new weapons you can actually craft for free. So it benefits free to play players and grinders, you know. So you can actually craft those and I'm going to show you right now. So if we go here, scroll down here, there's a couple of new weapons. There's this one, this one, and this one. And these, if you're still not in Dragon Spine. So you can pause the video and see what they do if you'd like. But overall, I will put a link to the in the description of of like where you how how you can obtain these weapons. I will do that for you if you want to go check that out. But yeah, those are new weapons, uh, new and uh, a little bit old, but still fairly fairly new weapons. You can actually still get number sixteen is leveling up your statue leveling up your statue is something you want to consider because it's very important it increases your stamina not only just gives you rewards but it increases increases your stamina and that helps you dodge run and attack for longer and more often so that is something you also want to be doing so always check your statue and make sure it's leveled up as much as you can tip number 17 crafting uh, crafting is fairly easy you basically uh, grab some materials that you need and you craft what you need right here set on the left side so when you take a look at all these items they have certain crafting materials that they're asking for for you to craft a certain item they also introduced this new um, this new area right here to the right it's uh or i don't know if it's been here but i just want to talk about it it's like uh these four sets right here uh gladiators wanders bloodstained chivalry and, and noblesse you can try to like uh in this case gamble for one of those artifacts for with good stats Which, whichever you want you just uh, click the the artifacts you want to put in and basically what it does is that it will give you one piece for every three that you use. For example, right here, I'm using three random artifacts. It doesn't have to be, you know, bless obliged. But these are random uh, yellow or legendary, you know, artifacts. You need, you can only use those, by the way. And uh, basically what it does is that when I click uh, continue right here, it will give me one no bless oblige piece and it will be legendary with random stats so if you don't want to farm um like the dungeon or domain i do recommend i guess you doing this but it can also be like you know um risky because it's like it's, it's rng so it's random if you get good stats or not but if you have a lot of pieces you don't need then sure go for it 
Tip number 18 is pre-farming. Pre-farming for characters is a good thing because you can basically be prepared for when the character comes out and drop every like resource you want or how much you want into that character um, and basically have them leveled up and ready to play. But uh, what I also recommend is that uh, sometimes they don't tell you what the character will need so that's why you need to look at leaks perhaps or, or something among those lines or search it up on Google or, or anything. And yeah, that that will that will actually help you out. So that's what I didn't do a lot a lot of the time. Like I waited until a character to come out and then start farming stuff for them, which was actually terrible. So if you really like a character that's gonna that's gonna come out in the future, I suggest you start uh, farming stuff for for them now. So when they come out, you can have them leveled up and ready to play. Tip number nineteen is friendship and you can actually increase friendship levels with characters uh the more that you play you know play play with them like have them in their party and also you can increase their friendship level by doing daily commissions random events and the and domains or killing bosses so you can get like a cool name card in this case like for Kazu and all that see i have a couple for some characters like i have ghanis i have hotels uh, and uh kicking over here so you can also do that with uh characters if you want to like basically um have more dialogue interaction with them or just you want that cool like name card that they give you the ones I just showed so <coughs> sorry um, tip number 20 is eating in a dungeon you can actually eat in a dungeon and you can pull up the menu and actually have your character eat food while you're fighting if you're in solo the game will pause but if you're in co-op you can still do it and you can actually feed your characters. Uh, I'll show show it right here. I didn't know this back then, and I wish I did now, which sucks so much. But yes, I do tell you that. One thing though is you cannot eat in the abyss. So yes, and here I will demonstrate that you can actually eat in here. See, Rosaria is a bit we weak with like a couple of HP missing. She's gonna get a little lower, and then I can actually bring up the menu and feed her some food. See? So you can actually do that if you want to stay alive in the domain. So there you go. Condensed resin versus regular resin. So basically what condensed resin does is basically for 40 resin regular You can craft one of these and what basically it does is that when you enter a domain or go to a lay life flower You get basically double the rewards for just doing it once. So this is really good for like faster farming I always use condensed resin so I do recommend that. I have asked my friend as well if, if uh, condensed resin is better than regular resin and he said that yes so I do take that into like consideration. Um, so basically it is faster and you should consider it so you don't take a long time. I will put uh, a link to uh, how to get condensed resin because I believe it is a recipe. I'll put that in the description. So if you want to go check it out, it'll be in the description. Number 22. Don't risk your pity for a four star. This refers to if you are very close to getting a five star. So let's say you're at uh, 
70, 70 pulls in uh, the Kokomi banner, for example. You don't want to be rolling 10 more times just to get, for example, for example, in this case, I want Rosaria. And I'm at 70 pulls here and I'm close to 90. I have not got a 5 star, so it's really close that I'm about to get one. You don't want to be rolling for a chance to get Rosaria because that can actually turn into like you getting Kokomi. This only means if you do not want Kokomi. So yes, you don't want to be risking your pity for a 5 star you do not want just to get a 4 star. So always keep that in mind because Primo Gems are very hard to get as you go higher AR. <coughs> Number 23, doing the expeditions every day. Expeditions is a, a sort of a new thing they've introduced not that long ago. So returning players could actually see this. And what they do is that you can put certain characters in, uh, in like a little mission to go get stuff. So in this case, my Bennett went to go get some uh, raw meat and uh, fowl. So he was done with that. See, he gives me some nice rewards. So basically, there's these white points right here that you can take your characters to, and they'll give you some rewards if you send one character for a, for a total of let's say four hours, eight hours, twelve hours, twenty hours, and the rewards grow grow more the more hours they are over there. So this is twenty hours in our time not 20 hours in the game so uh keep that in mind so the more time you send them over there the more rewards they get uh, also take in, in consideration that the characters you are using on the for this for the expeditions you can still play them for example if i use bennett here uh i'll pull out bennett right here watching it you can still use bennett see so don't 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 be afraid to like use those characters it's just for their own thing so yeah expeditions are good for farming a couple of things that you need so you can look at all of them they have a uh, monster leeway and also inazuma now so yes after every big update in Genshin they add hidden achievements so you can keep an eye out on them so basically like i said ever 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 after every big update there's hitting achievements so you can probably i don't know look up a youtube video and there'll be some there uh i'll probably link some videos in the description for this um so go check it out uh also you get a sweet primo gem so there's that and <laughs> the last one and this one is daily logins are a thing yes daily logins are a thing and i'm not talking about daily commissions or those type of things i'm actually talking about that mihoyo actually has this app called hoyo lab that you can access through a uh, pc or phone and uh you actually can check in over at their site and uh get a uh, a reward daily it's like a couple of mora a couple of food or books and so forth i'll see if i can link it in the description as well for you to go check it out but you actually if it doesn't link you from the link that i posted in the, in the description just search up uh mihoyo lab or hoyo lab at google or somewhere there and uh, it will show you put uh the Hoyo Lab or Hoyo Lab daily login. One more thing, you actually ha must have your account linked on that site over there to get the rewards to your account here. It, this one is new, but I do want to talk about it. And it is, you can actually transfer your account now and play on different platforms on the same account. So, for example, if you're on console and you want to play on PC, you can actually link your account. So, doing that is a thing now. And I believe you can also do it on mobile. So, all you have to do is uh, go to settings. 
open the menu, go to settings and go to account and go to user center right here. So you do that, you link your account and you can play on different platforms. Okay, that pretty much sums up the video. Those are my best tips I can give you in Genshin Impact in 2021 for new players and uh, basically players that play to this day and have played in the past or that are returning. So yes, uh, this is my first guide I believe ever making. So if it helped you out, you know, like, subscribe, comment if it was helpful or not or did I miss something you know because I was actually really nervous or anxious making this so uh yeah <laughs> I uh you know I'm a big anxious fellow so yeah but I made it through so if it helped you out do all that for me thank you so much thank you so much for watching and uh see you next time